Hello everybody, it is your Peacekeeper, coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series for the German Battleship Line. This is the Kunik class of battleships. And before we get too much further, there's two parts of the, the pronunciation of this name that I think we need to just address straight off the bat. The first is... You will see this frequently typed out as K-O-E-N-I-G. That is correct. That is a correct way of writing out in the standard 26-letter alphabet of the English language the umlaut, which is the two dots above the O. The pronunciation of that, however, is one that is frequently misdone in the United States. There are a number of people that pronounce this Koenig, that is an acceptable way to pronounce the last name using an anglicized translation of the, the pronunciation. But in German, it is actually the O umlaut is actually pronounced U. So it would be Kunig. Or, if you want to get even more confusing, it could be Kunish, which would be the high German form of it in which G's actually sound like a CH or Kunik, in which a G sounds like a CK. In general, it, we'll just call it the Kunig for this video. This is the Tier 5 German battleship, and these ships were commissioned in 1914 and served until 1919 when they were scuttled at Scapa Flow. There are four ships in the class. The Kunig, Grosser Kurfürst, which is another one that we'll get to in the German language, Mark Graf and Kronprinz. So those are the four German battleships of the Koenig class. And as I said, all four of them were scuttled in Scapa Flow at the end of the war to prevent the British from getting a hold of them. In terms of comparing this ship to the preceding Kaiser class of ships, really the big difference is, is Instead of having the 1-2-2 two, two configuration that we had on the Kaiser, we now have a 2-1-2 two, two configuration similar to the New York in that the front two turrets are super firing, one is over the other, and the rear two turrets are super firing, one over the other. The center turret does have a much better arc, and as a result, these ships do have significantly better broadside capability. It's far easier to bring all the guns to bear on the Koenigs than it is on the Kaisers, and that translate most notably in this game in which you can keep this ship angled at some very stupid, nearly perpendicular angles to ships and still fire all 10 guns. That is a huge advantage for this ship, especially since it gets them advancing towards enemy ships that much better. The front turrets and the rear turrets are capable of, quote, firing over their shoulder, meaning they can fire at a pretty good angle back up against the superstructure. That allows them to either advance or retreat as necessary while still firing all their guns. Notable battles. Well, let's just put it this way. The entire Koenig class basically fought as one continuous unit throughout all of World War I. All of them fought in, I believe, five major naval operations. That would be the raid on Scarborough Harp Hartlepool and Whitby, Bombardment of Yarmouth and Lowestoft, Battle of Jutland, and the Operation Albion, and then finally they were scuttled. At Jutland, these ships did see some extensive action, and they were part of the heaviest engagements in Jutland. They were also credited with sinking several British ships to include a destroyer, the HMS Nestor, and the cruiser HMS Defense, the latter of which, going up kind of like the Hood, would go later in the engagement between the Bismarck and the Hood. Magazine detonation. In terms of in-game gameplay, I... <laughs> This is going to get kind of boring to say, but the honest-to-God truth is, is they all play the same. These ships are brawlers. I mean, they are just freakishly good for secondary engagements. Getting up close and personal with those secondaries just ups your damage rate tremendously. This class, the Koenigs, also have some of the most freakishly accurate battleship guns of 
any ship in the game. I, if I remember correctly, the data mined version shows that their sigma value, which is their vertical dispersion, so you have horizontal and vertical dispersion, the sigma value is the vertical dispersion, is like a 2.0, which the Yamato is like a 2.1, and I think the Iowa and Montana are like 1.9, and then the North Carolina is 1.8. So very freakishly accurate guns, considering that also at Tier 5 is the New York class of ships, and in a lot of ways, the Koenigs absolutely dwarf the performance of a New York. I mean, just absolutely dwarf. Even though we only have 12-inch guns. So you got freakishly accurately gunnery, you got freakishly good secondaries, you've got great maneuverability, good solid turning circle, and then to throw onto that, you also have some of the best anti-aircraft of any of the tech tree capable battleships. And by tech tree capable, what I'm referring to are ships that you can actually research through the tech tree. Yes, the USS Texas is also in the tech tree. It's purchasable by doubloons, but I'm, I'm referring to the in tech tree line ships, the New York, which is supposed to be an anti-aircraft barge because national flavor of the U.S., this shoots down two and a half times as many aircraft. Think about that for a moment. And one and a half as many as the Congo class of battleships do for the Japanese. It also has that amazing turtleback armor scheme, which you will come to love for the German battleships because it prevents you from getting citadeled. And, as with always, it will take high white damage numbers. The one thing to keep in mind about these ships is if you get in an engagement with one, if you're planning on aiming anywhere, aiming at the waterline really isn't that good of an idea. Aiming at this weaker upper portion where the belt is thinner, 200 and 170 millimeter, is going to resort, result in far more normal penetrations than if you were to shoot at the waterline and try and punch through this 350 millimeters of belt. The only way that you will citadel these ships is if they are hard over in the opposite direction so that their, quote, red skirt is showing, and that's as soon as the ship pops back up out of the water, you'll briefly see just a little bit of the red skirt here. Yep, there it is. When that is up and out of the water a good enough portion, you can actually penetrate into the through the, the hull armor in the lower portion on the torpedo bulges and hit the citadel. Well, let's go over the stats. She has 47,100 hit points, a boatload of armor, no pun intended. Still really bad torpedo damage protection. The TDS on this, I've noticed an error in the actual value that the actual Koenig class torpedo bulges were 40 millimeters thick. In this game, they're only 25. Don't know why that is. Probably because of balance. As I said, the main battery is consists of 12-inch guns. There's 10 of them in a 2-1-2 configuration for the turret layout. The secondaries, we have four dual turret 105mm dual-purpose mounts. It's going to be these guys right here. And then we have a boatload of our secondaries, 150 millimeter, or dang near six inches, 14 of those, seven per side. So each side of these has to bring to bear a grand total of 11 secondaries. These things go off and they just rip destroyers apart. Now, this captain doesn't have the sec manual fire control for secondaries yet. When we get there, I'm sure it's just going to be an absolute freak show watching those secondaries just destroy enemy ships that come into their range. Speaking of their range, they have a 5.4 kilometer sec excuse me, 5.4 kilometer secondary range. <coughs> the main battery has a 16 kilometer firing range, and like I said, at 16 kilometers, the accuracy is just freaking ridiculous. They are just unbelievably accurate. This says 223 to 223 meter di dispersion. I'm not convinced that it's 223 meters. It seems way tighter than that, and you'll see this in the battle video. In terms of anti-aircraft suite, 
thanks to the dual purpose mounts and their rate of fire, you have a lot of really good AA. Now this def AA rating seems a lot lower than it actually is. And like I said, the stats bear it out. If you go to warships.today and look at the stats for the past two weeks for this and compare it to the other tier fives, it is a lot more than the US battleships are and the uh, a little bit more than the Japanese battleships are. It also has a huge complement of medium range stuff. It does have a maximum speed of 24 knots, a turning circle of 620 meters, and a rudder shift time of 13.2 seconds, which is really good for a tier 5 battleship. 14.1 kilometer detection range by sea and 10.6 by air. In terms of upgrades, main armament mod 1, it's a staple of this line. The second slot, we're going to go with Secondary Battery Mod 2. This is going to increase the firing range of your secondaries by 20%. It's also going to decrease the dispersion by 20%. So it's going to make those secondaries even more accurate. And then, of course, Damage Control Systems Mod 1. So like I said, this ship's a really good brawler, but it does have very accurate guns. So you could play it either way if you want. I recommend getting into brawling range because it's fun to watch those secondaries go. And it does add quite a bit more damage to it. This battle, I want to say, is 135,000 damage, I think is what it ended up at. So let's cut to that video. Alright, so let's get to this. If you guys have watched my, my battle montage, Z Battle... Yeah, Z Battle Montage number one. You will recognize some of these clips from the very end of it. This was an absolutely amazing battle. This was, I think, the first battle that I played in and after I bought the Koenig back for purposes of making these videos. So, yeah, did a really good job on, on, on these. And I was, like I said, this ship and I get along really well. This is everything that the New York probably should have been in this game way back when and isn't because reasons, I'm assuming. But anyway, you can see it is a tier 5 match. We do have carriers on the teams, although the carrier on their team doesn't really come into play until the end of this. We're stacked up here on the north side of Big Race, which is one of my favorite maps of all time. I would kill to have a tier 8 match on this map. That would be ridiculous. There would be no hiding, but it would be a fun brawl. And it is the two cap points where each team has their own cap point, so... Eh. We're gonna go north, since we're already up here. We only have a 24 knot top speed, and I don't think we ever really get there for very long, but... You know, hey. That's... It is what it is. Much... It's still very much like the... US battleships and the fact that... There's... There's enough speed there that you can kind of flex. But for the most part, you're kind of stuck going one... One direction once you start going that way. So let's go up here. Oh, look, a Kirov. Hmm. Oh. Dang, stealthy Russian cruisers. Going broadside. Oh, don't threaten me with a good time, guys. So look at this dispersion. Got a lot of horizontal dispersion there, but... Oh, well, I guess I overshot him a bit with those. That's a little annoying. That's all right. We are starting to take some fire now from multiple different sources. The Miyogi decided he wanted to join this fight. And the Kirov, I think, is going to disappear before we get out there, but... Look at that dispersion. Oh my goodness. Yeah, if that would have hit, like, half a tick further back, I think that Kirov would no longer be in existence. We are two salvos into the game and 11,000 damage up. So... Huh. Who would have thunk it? Hey there, Mr. Miyagi. Actually, I'm pretty sure after getting on my high horse about how to pronounce pronounce things in German that I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. That's okay. There you can see the good dispersion. We didn't quite get that second battery, that, uh, sorry, the third, third turret into, into fire there. That's okay, though. We don't need him right now. Three salvos in and 17,000 damage. Go ahead and target our anti-aircraft there on those dive bombers. And Karlsruhe doing things that no cruiser should ever do. And I overshot him. As with all the German battleships, the primary guns do have a very, very, very fast muzzle velocity. So 
you don't need to lead ships nearly as much and again that's the second time that I've fired at a ship in this game and well I'll just be honest could have deleted them but didn't because I didn't aim correctly here we're gonna see just how well those guns penetrate we are going to also see look at that shot dispersion that was five hits for 8,000 damage I've lost count of how many salvos we're in. I think it's five or six. And we're at 31,000 damage. Got ourselves a line riding Miyogi scrub over here. We're going to go ahead and put some shot out on him and pray for a big hit. Oh, sorry there, Mr. Svetlana. And, of course, you'll occasionally get some really weird dispersion. Yeah, that would be one of those really weird dispersion moments. We got ourselves a Bogue off in the distance. We're going to go ahead and engage him for obvious reasons. One less aircraft carrier means less aircraft coming at me later, unfortunately. We don't get that, and this you will recognize from the video. Again, look at this shot dispersion. I'm firing at 14 kilometers in one of these things, and that's a pretty solid distance away. Also Citadel, 11,000 damage. You can't complain too much about that. We're just racking up the hits here. Got ourselves a Texas within secondary range. We're going to go ahead and we're going to show him our love. And show him what brawling is all about. Or not. Yep, that was a perfect example of restraint. Paying attention to the ships that are around you is very important. That Texas wasn't paying attention to the Isakazi that was there. He should have been. He wasn't. Our Bogue has popped back up. Take another shot at him and see if we can't maybe erase him. Especially since he's launching aircraft all the time. Nope. Two overpens for not much damage. Mr. Miyogi is firing at me. I'm a little upset by this, but there's not much I can really do about it. We'll go ahead and fire our two front guns at the Bogue again. And One of the big things with battleships, guys, is, is to keep your rate of fire up. Oh, overshot him. When you keep your rate of fire up, and by the, what I'm what I'm talking about there is always find yourself a target that's within range that you can shoot at. That way you're constantly putting out shells onto targets. Apparently I've angered this bogue. He sent aircraft at me. That's fine. Go ahead and do that. We're going to exercise the immense energy loss of the turn on one of these ships. We are also going to step back and turn full over. Tight turning circle plus losing a lot of energy in turns. All of it comes to help and dodged. It also conveniently lines us up for this next shot up against an AFK or at least thought to be AFK Koenig. Of course, only two aircraft shot down this match, so not a whole lot of aircraft being shot down. But look at this dispersion. Again, you'll get these just absolutely amazing shot groupings. And unfortunately, no Citadel. I would have figured at this range it might have been a possibility, but it's not. The one thing to, to note about these ships is the turret traverse is particularly slow. So with that in mind, if you're planning on making any big changes in which side your turrets are on, because you're running out of map edge, there's islands, whatever. Make sure to make that change as early as possible. And always keep your heads up and... Oh, see, he's moving now. Always keep your head up and make sure that you're planning ahead with your movements. And make sure you're finding targets so that when the guns come up, as they come up, you can engage targets with them. Great shot dispersion. Three out of the four shells hit. We're up to 65,760 damage with only 38 shell hits. Ah, Whiskey Badger. I'm sorry that you have been lost to the sea. We're going to go ahead and get our secondaries pre-targeted on this guy, even though he is way out there for our secondaries. Mostly because you can see how the battle is kind of developing. We're going to be end up pushing into their cap. They've got two battleships over here and a cruiser 
that are going to come back to try and rescue the, their, their cap. It's not going to end up working, but... This Koenig is not paying attention to me. Okay. Yep, open up broadside to me. That's a great idea. And we'll just go ahead and take off a whole bunch of your hit points. Yep, 13,478 damage. Continue to focus on that Svetlana. It doesn't matter to me. You know, I'm just the one that's actually doing damage to you. And Svetlana misses Torps, unfortunately. He's still broadside to me, so we'll go ahead and, well, we'll add to his pain and punishment. And another 10,000 completely off of his hit points. And we're up to 90,289 damage with only 52 shell hits and 11 secondary hits. Once again, torpedoes miss. And now the Koenig and I are going to get into a brawl. Except for he's not going to make it into the brawl. That was probably overkill. I don't think I needed quite that many shells, but eh. Oh well. Next up on our list is this Miyogi that's been riding the wall. Of course, you know, good for him, I guess. But, uh, well, maybe we won't. Let's, let's actually go for this other one. Because I think what's going to end up happening here is that Miyogi is going to go back to riding on the wall. And we're going to be left to face off against this one. That one, not not the one that the secondaries are selected on, but uh, Supreme... That guy, GLA Commander. He is the fully upgraded Miyogi. Whereas the other one is the either stock hole or B hole. I can't remember which. As you can see there, we had a bounce, shell bounce. And a complete miss. And very little damage on the one shell hit that they got. Keeping that rate of fire up, the rear turrets still aren't in. And we get a bunch of bounces off the top of their turret. It's a little frustrating. Got a nearly dead Kirov over there. Nope, he's dead. Okay, we can move along here. At this point, I'm turning myself in because I'm trying... <laughs> turning myself in, that's pretty funny for me to say. Anyway, I'm turning into these other two ships because I want to give myself a good angle to them to deflect as much fire as we can. Meanwhile, I also want to take advantage of the really good gun arcs on these ships. And... here we are! Hey, buddy! 12,768 hit points taken off that Miyogi. And... well, maybe we can finish off that other one. We're gonna go ahead and turn out, because I'm still focused on him, but... Let's see... no, nope, yeah, let's see if we can't get him. No, never mind. We're going to go ahead and engage this guy because if I don't kill him, we're going to end up being ramming each other, and frankly, that's not what I want. Some pretty decent salvos there. I forget what the actual total amount was, but it was plenty high enough to make a bit of a difference there. We're going to go ahead and start him on fire with our secondaries. Again, our secondaries are just going to town at this point. I'm trying to avoid getting rammed. And I'm hoping I can kill him before he actually pulls it off. Nope! You can't overmatch the front bow on a Miyogi with the 12-inch gun, so that's good. We're just gonna go ahead and keep rotating here. And, okay, he's down. Now on to this other Miyogi. Okay. And a miss. Yep, we're gonna go ahead and taunt because, uh, how dishonor a brew. Bam! Okay, it wasn't 135, it was 128. That's still a pretty good game in this ship. Especially since the average damage for the server is much, much, much lower than that. Well, this must have been my second victory of the day. And there you can see the top of the team with 1,392 base XP. Secondaries didn't do a whole lot of damage. They were involved. They set one fire total of about 5,500 damage. And there is all of the credits. Like I said, this is one of my favorite ships in the German battleship line. It's a really good ship. It can be played as either kind of the mid-range sniper, mid-range because it doesn't have a whole lot of range, or it can be played as the brawler. I recommend the brawling thing just because it's a heck of a lot more fun. And truthfully, it's what these ships excel at. Anyway, this has been how to play for the SMS Koenig. 
This has been your Peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you guys for watching.